G'day there, Richard Musgrave Evans here with another plein air adventure. Today we've got low tide mangroves and we're looking across to the Flinders Ranges on the other side. Now we're working fairly large today so this should be a bit of fun. Okay, let's do this. Now what I'll do is, as usual, explain what I'm working with. Pallet knife, clear primed Belgian linen and oil paint. Okay, now it's a bit of a um, light and shadow day. The sun's coming out sometimes and then it's going again, so that can add and create a bit of interest. Anyway, without mucking around, let's get into it. As usual, placed a few darks. I put a horizon line there. Now I measured that line. The reason I measured it, as you know, I like to get everything right. So later on when it's back at home and you're looking at the painting, you haven't got some weird crooked horizon. So it's better to just measure it, block in, take it off. Okay. Now, biggest differences at the moment would be might stick a bit of that blue ocean in. Cobalt blue, maybe a bit of uh, viridian green. Let's see what we've got here. Yeah, that's way too bright. I can knock that back a bit with a bit of magenta. Gives that colour of the magenta gives you a bit of a colour of the weed on the bottom, and then the uh, viridian green gives you that bit of turquoise of the sandy bottom. So that's a good combination mixing the both together. A bit more viridian, oh, viridian and permanent magenta. You can see with your pallet knife, it's actually quite good for blocking in. It's quite fast. So I'm just working up to that tape to give myself a nice clean edge. Okay, now I'm going to get into the shallower water, which is uh, turquoise, maybe with a bit of yellow ochre. Gonna paint some of the seaweed on the bottom again, more of a grey version. Yeah. Stand back for a minute. You can see a light blue sky colour getting reflected into the water, so I'll just mix up a bit of that. on the pallet knife, just clean that off. It's better the sun's come out. I prefer that look. That's the look I'm after. There's always flies, there's still flies here, whoops. Don't know where that viridian's coming from. Aha! Uh -huh. Keep picking it up on the edge there, accidentally.
Just putting some downward marks. This is going to be the reflection of all the shallow rock pulley areas. Put them in sideways to start with. And it's good to pull downwards to give that reflection quality. Now in the foreground, it's getting a bit darker on the media. Havoc today. See now the sun's come out, how more turquoise the water's gone. Always the way. Okay, now I'll put some of this uh, foreground kind of uh, shallow tide rocky stuff. Lighter in tone, a bit more yellow ochre, a bit more white. I seem to be cursed with getting viridian and everything today. I might just move that one side. Now the sun's come out, I can see there's some shadows on the bottom of these uh, mangroves. So I'm going to bung the shadows in now because I like to start with the darks first. They weren't very obvious before, but now it's become more obvious. Time to put it in. Okay. It's going to mix up a Colour for the mangroves themselves, the uh, light tone of the mangroves where the sun's shining. I've already got the shadow tone of the mangroves, but now the sunlight portion. Very lightly touched. Lightly drag it over, letting the dark come through. Okay, always working with the biggest differences. So just then I did all that, and now what I'll do is uh, get back painting the sand colour. that wind. Lighten that tone, that was a bit dark.
now it's time to take a tape off. Right, start at this end. There's a wind blowing from that way. That gives a uh, now that gives a good guide to the edge. So now I can work with the uh, sky tones and the Flinders Rangers colours themselves. Clean a bit of the area up. Give myself somewhere to work. Here. Trying to mix a real pale tone for those hills, they're quite washed out today. I'm going to actually change to the uh, smaller knife for this job. Get that tone in there like so. I'll right, have a look. Not too bad. Just mixing in the uh, mangrove colour on the other side of the gulf where it just meets the hills. There's a bank of mangroves. It's actually a little island in the middle between the two. Just lightly put them in. I'll leave the raw linen there at the moment. The raw linen is actually working like the uh, sandbank. You've got the, um, the mangroves out there and just below them you've got the sandbank. The raw then it's about the same colour so you just leave it that colour. Alright, we're going to get into the sky now. It's kind of a dusty, hazy sky today. There's a lot of wind. There was a storm last night. Guys, very hazy, so let's see what I've got here. It's kind of a, it was that magenta -y, uh, washed out colour, now I've put a bit of burnt sienna just to warm it up a bit. Because all the particles in the air are getting lit up, up by the sun.
daisy. Just uh, get that out. I'll throw a little bit of yellow ochre around, a bit more white, a bit more yellow ochre, maybe too much. Oop, that's definitely too much. Like so. Okay, now I'll introduce a bit of sky colour, as in clear sky colour, which will be more of a blue, but it's a pale green really, so I've got a little bit of yellow over with the blue. quite interesting with all the dust in the atmosphere it gives you real pastely colours rather than the strong outback colours that you quite often get. It's a good thing about painting plain air, you get all the different effects, you get to work with all different colours on different days. Blue and now red. them all together nicely. bit of the cloud cover colour in.
picking up a little bit more of that cloud color. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, white. Let's have a look what I've got. Just pull that through like so. Help blend them all together. Need to keep the knife clean for that sort of work. Okay, now the sun has come out, there's a bit more turquoise in the water, so I'm going to brighten that up a bit. Always like to use those colours if I can. And they're there today, so let's do it. Yellow ochre. Meridian green, white. Like so. Few flies around, I'll tell you that much. The wind's cut out, that's why we're getting the flies again now. Now I'm just making a bit of a uh, sky reflection colour to put into the water. I notice there's some real pale blue. Just on the edges where the wind where the wind can't strike, like you get the wind across the water. But where it can't actually catch the water, you get the pale blue reflective qualities of the sky. And where the wind's hitting the water, the waves stand up a bit and you can see into the bottom. So right on this edge here, I'm just adding a little bit of pale blue. A little bit of a uh, growth in the shallow water. I put that in with uh, vertical upward marks like that to give the illusion of foliage.
Just stand back and have a look at that one. going to very lightly touch the canvas and drag it across to give the illusion to those little rocks. Very lightly touching. Always working around, never uh, finishing anything. Keep working around the canvas. What I'm actually doing here is cleaning the uh, edge of the hill up by scraping some of the sky off and bringing the undertone, which was the blue of the hill, back in. You can actually scrape the paint off and clean the edge up with a palette knife, that is. Saying that, I've gone and gone over the edge here with the water, and now I'm bringing the water back up square. <clears throat> what I'll do is I'm uh, just going to peel the tape off so I can see what I'm doing. Mix up the brew, Some nice <clears throat> half mix, strong colours. Just flick a few, look. Just lightly touching. What I was just doing then is thinning the paint in the distance because even though I like to paint thick and chunky with palette knives and whatever, distance feels more like distance if it's thin and it'll also give a better contrast to the foreground which I've painted thickly so you get that combination between thick, thickly painted foreground and distance which seems to recede when you paint it thinner. A few bugs are landed in it so we just Scoop a few of them out.
Just very lightly touching to add a bit more highlight to some of those clouds. It's just scraping. That wind isn't letting up. Just uh, knocking in a few of the little rocks here and there. Not too many, just enough to give the illusion of rocks. Gonna try a little brush, you know what we're trying to Okay, so what I did then is I just grabbed the brush towards the end just to um, introduce a little bit more turquoise into the water. I can see as the day's gone on, there's some beautiful turquoises coming in there. Quite often, even though I love the pellet knife, sometimes the brush has that little subtlety that you can get. And so I've introduced a bit more uh, viridian green and yellow ochre with white. Just lightly rubbed it into it to get that beautiful blending in water. And then you've got the contrast of soft water compared to chunky foreground. Alright, so that'll just about do it. I'll turn the camera off so you can have a look and um, once again the bold colours are pretty much there and uh, let's have a look. Alright, here we go. Guess what? Afternoon coastal breeze, you wouldn't believe it. Anyway, let's pan in. Now the technique I've used here is uh, quite thinly painted for the water and uh, downward marks for the reflections in the water. Then contrasting it by using really thick chunky paint for the rocks etc. In the distance you've got the beautiful Flinders Ranges on the other side of the Gulf, the mangroves, and a nice hazy type of sky but still full of sunlight. Let's have a look at the palette. Cobalt Blue, Burnt Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Yellow Ochre, Titanium White and Cad Orange and Yellow. And a couple of my favourites, Magenta and Viridian Green. Well, there you go, look at that. The end of another video. Now, if you like the video, remember to like the video and subscribe and forward it on to your friends. Until next time, see you around the road. Cheers.